Hiya! So in this video, we're going to look at an example. Uh, and it's one of my... It's an example I personally love. Uh, mainly because I get to calculate how bad winter is going to be in Toronto. <laughs> um, so know that these numbers are not accurate numbers. I just took random numbers. Uh, but we're going to assume that it's winter in Toronto. So it's freezing cold. Like it's below 20 degrees Celsius. Not minus 20. Just pos It's below my positive 20. That, for me, that's cold. In a, in the, I don't got time. Um, and we're going to assume it snows roughly once every 10 days. I think that's a rough good estimate. I don't know. Maybe a Toronto person can tell me if that sounds normal. But we're going to assume it snows once every 10 days. And we're going to assume this as exponential distribution. Um, in other words, we're going to think probably we're going to be using Erlang's distribution because we have an exponential distribution. Um, and we're going to be doing this probably more than one time. And in the next sentence, um, we say that. What is the expected time for the next four snow days to occur? So in other words, we're using Erlang. So Erlang in this case, this is asking, what is the probability? Uh, so I needed a random variable. So here, let ti be, time, be the time until uh, i think snowstorm storm after i minus one i minus first snowstorm or i guess just storm um so basically we have and then we let g4 be t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4 this is basically what we're trying to solve yeah so here we're asking what's the probability that um, that G4, um, or what, sorry, not the probability, we're asking expected time. So we're asking what's the expected value of G4. Um, well, actually, this shouldn't be too, too difficult because we really just want to look at R over lambda. So this is R over lambda. So we need to just need to figure out what R is and what lambda is. So R is equal to 4 since we want 4 since we are asking for snowstorms, snows. Lambda, where's lambda coming from? Um, well, here we just need to look at the um, lambda coming from the exponential, exponential distribution. And we know here it snows once every 10 days. So in other words, the expected value of ti is equal to 10, but it's also equal to um, 1 over lambda, right? This implies lambda is equal to 10. They all have the same distribution, right? So we can just choose any of them. It doesn't matter. So in other words, what we have is E of G4 is 4 divided by um, lambda, so 10. Um, wait, no, I did this wrong. Pause. Oh, that's why. The expected value is not 10. That would be 10 in one day. Because our unit, see, this is why units are important. So our unit is 1. Oh, no, no, this was right. 10. Lambda is actually 1 over 10. Yeah. Because expected time is 10 days. That's what I did wrong. Lambda. Banana. I, for a second, I was like, wait, whatever. Anyway. So it's 4 over lambda, so 1 over 10. So this gives me 40, So which kind of makes sense if you think about it. If we're having about a snowstorm once every 10 days, then four snowstorms should happen in 40 days. Kind of makes sense. Um, so that's why when I wrote down 10, I was like, wait, something's wrong. It can't be. It should be around 40. Um, okay, so we saw that. Let's ask a different question now. The next question we're going to ask is, well, okay, let's do something a little more complicated. What's the probability that the next four snow days will occur next week? So next week basically means, well, in seven to, seven to 14 days from now. So what this is basically asking is, what's the probability um, that we have GR, uh, well, G4, is between 7 and 14? Now here, 
we have a formula, right? We have this thing. Um, and we also know what this technically is equal to. This is the integral of 7 to 14. Uh, and we just plug it in. e to the minus, um, our lambda is 3, right? So lambda, no, lambda is 1 over 10. Uh, so we have e to the minus 1 over 10 times x times lambda, so 1 over 10 to the r, I guess I should write this out. So uh, can I copy what's up here? Or is this going to yell at me? Nope, it's going to yell at me. No, stop. <gasps> no, why are, you, why are you doing this? Oh, no. Okay, stop. Can you go away? There we go. Really? My application hates me right now. <laughs> there we go. We're back. Uh, so here, I'll write it down on the side so we can remember what it is. It's e to the minus lambda x lambda to the r, um, x to the r minus 1, divided by r minus 1 factorial. Here we have r is equal to 4, and lambda is equal to 1 over 10. So that's basically what I'm plugging into uh, this formula. So I have e to the minus 1, o 1 over 10 to the x. So I might as well do x over 10. Uh, and then on the factorial, I have 1 over 10 to the r times x to the r minus 1, so 3, divided by um, r minus 1, so 3 factorial. And here I would do a dx. So at this point, we're going to do um, an integral. Uh, and I don't know if we're going to have enough space, but we're going to figure it out. Uh, so this is equal to, let's bring out all these numbers. So I can do um, 1 over 10 to the 4 times 3 factorial of 7 to 14 of e to the minus x over 10 um, times x cubed dx. So here you're going to have to remember, um, what's it called? Integration by parts. Uh, so if you haven't done integration by parts, I don't know if you know the little secret that I use for my classes, um, and it's called voodoo. So basically what you do um, is you grab your u dv, so you grab u dv, and you do uh, vu do. Uh, yeah. So the, this integral, u dv, gives me vu do. That's how I remember it. Anyway, it's kind of weird. Um, so let's kind of figure out what these numbers are and go from there. Uh, so let's see, let's figure out first off, what should be my V, what should be my U, etc. So usually what do we do? Um, we want um, U to be something that can easily collapse, right? So here I'm going to make this be my U um, and my DV, I guess I'm going to make be um, this. Um, so I make U equal X cubed and DV is equal to E to the minus X over 10 DX. So du gives me 3x squared dx, and v, if I take the anti-integral, the anti-derivative, I get minus 10 uh, times e to the minus x over 10. So what do I get? Remember, I have the little formula that um, u dv is equal to v u v du, v du. This also helps you, because I have du here, I know I have to have dv here. So that's also like how I kind of remember how this works. Um, and so what this basically gives me is I can add this equality. I do the 1 over uh, 10 to the 4 times 3 factorial times um, vu, so x cubed times minus 10 e to the x over 10 minus all of this from 7 to 14 minus 7 to 14 uh, and then I get 3, I, so I get minus 10, so I might as well bring that in front, so minus 10, um, e to the minus x over 10, 
3x squared, so I'll bring the 3 in front too, so this is 30, x squared dx. Guess what? We got a voodoo again. <laughs> um, so obviously we're going to have to do this a couple more times, right? Because we have to get x squared down to x, and then we have to get it down to a constant, and at that point we can finally integrate. So if you finally, if you do this a couple more times, I won't do it uh, in order to not make this video exceedingly long. Um, what we end up getting is um, 1 over, so 10 to the 4 times 3 factorial. Uh, and we end up getting, so minus 10x cubed e to the minus x over 10. Uh, then plus, uh, or I guess minus, we get minus 300x squared e to the minus x over 10 minus 6,000. And I would actually ask that you try this out. Try this at home. Uh, do this into this next integral and make sure you get the same integral that I'm getting here. Um, to Because A, there's a chance I screwed up because I screw up a lot. Um, but also it's a good way for you to double check that you're understanding how to do integrals uh, and that there's no kind of problem in that. Um, at this point, you just plug in numbers um, and uh, substitute. So this this equation here gives me 60,000. This parentheses part should give me roughly 2,878.3076. Multiplying these out, you should get 0 0.047972. So roughly 4.8% chance um, that it'll snow four times in between 7 and 14 days, which makes sense, right? It should be a fairly small um, chance. Um, so I'll stop this video here. Um, and in the next video, we're going to look at the gamma distribution, uh, which is like an exp um, a continuation of the Erlang distribution. Uh, so I will see you then.